Man, have I been hard on the Transformers The Last Night toy line. So much so that I originally never planned to pick up Nitro. Uh, but the guy looks kind of cool. I'm going to take this out of it for a moment. And I want to explain why exactly I picked this guy up. You see, I got plans for him. I got big plans for him because we're going to start off taking a look at him like this, but he's going to end up looking like this. This is going to be technically the second part of what we're going to cover here, and it is a custom Titans Return Thunderwing. But for now, let's stick with the beginning of the story. This is where we're going to start in the latest Got Ba True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, share, check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor. Have a look for me everywhere. Um, spend some time on the channel. Uh, check out a little snippet of an interview I did on cbc.ca. Uh, and uh, check out a, an extended interview that I uh, was privileged to do as part of the Reviewer Revered series um, for Dolcar Toys and stuff. Uh, Dolcar 2Ks, uh, if you're searching for it. Um, what can I say? I was very honored to be asked and uh, it certainly gives some insight into my mind as messed up sometimes as it might be. Okay, so how are we going to do this? We're going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to Take this guy, <clears throat> we're going to have a look at him as Nitro, and uh, I'm going to do the, the transformation and all of that normal jazz, and <clears throat> then I'm going to give him a final score, and we're going to work our way back so that I can give him another final score as the custom Titans Return Thunderwing. So, that being said, we're going to begin by taking him off screen, and... The box that I started out with is right here. Uh, I will note that the head here has two eyes. It looks nothing like the head that we have on him. Um, on the back, there he is. It's the product shot. That's really about it. <clears throat> nothing too special there. And we bring this guy back in. He comes with two accessories. These, these little mis missile pods, they just have five millimeter Maybe I can bring them in closer, hey? They just have five millimeter um, pegs on them that go into holes. They're nicely painted, white. You know, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, the guy is an interesting looking amalgamation of stuff in terms of accuracy to the way he looked in the film. Not quite, people have been doing some great, amazing custom work that I've seen with this guy. Overall, I'm gonna score him at about an eight, and actually about a seven and a half. Like it's nitro-ish, you know? Decepticon Nitro is Nitro Zeus-esque, but it's not exactly correct. Still, does that mean he's not cool? No, actually he's, he's really quite cool. Uh, I'll fold in his shoulder pads for now. Um, the little missile pod things, they're just little, Missile pods, there's three of them on there. They're just molded white. It's nothing special. They're fine. Uh, take them off for now. And they do fit in there rather snugly. Actually, really snugly. Um, so we're starting off with about a seven and a half. Let's look at the articulation for the dude. Uh, his head can go left and it can go right. Of course, we all know by now that it is on a Titan Master type of thing, but it doesn't change, it doesn't do anything. What's interesting, however, is that the back of it seems to be clear plastic. It, I, 
it's like it's light piped but then we come to the front and there's nowhere for the light to come through because he just has this one painted eye it's very much an homage to the head of shockwave no doubt about it and i have seen this guy painted up as shockwave and it looks pretty darn cool um i'm gonna stick this in here and we'll get going again Now I stuck that in there off screen because to be perfectly honest with you, it's a really, really tight fit and it's just easier to do it where it all goes into black if you do it off screen. Uh, out of package, these pieces right here, these, these pieces right here are actually folded out around so I'm going to kind of take them out just to, to show you uh, exactly how it is that they're folded fresh out of package. And this was down, and this was down. Fresh out of package, he came like this. These, of course, are supposed to be folded back. I don't know if this is a, a, a weapon or what it is. I, I just know that it looks really cool on his arm. The other arm, of course, has a big cannon. So, uh, I got here and I pushed these in. And I could only get them in so far. And I said, well, it, it's, that's good enough to get this around. But, rest assured they will go in further. We'll get to that in just a, a little bit. Let's continue with the articulation. So the head is what it is. Uh, the arms can go way out, and both of them can, no problem. Uh, we have 90 degrees uh, at this elbow and at this elbow. Uh, we have bicep swivel on both arms. Oh, his hand is still up. The hand can flip in and out, but no swivel. Same over here, no swivel at the hand. Um, no waist articulation, which is, a, I guess, a little bit of a shame, but I could forgive it with the interesting way that this guy transforms. The legs can go way forward, which is cool, and back until it starts hitting kibble. If you can get it out around that, then, you know, you got more room back there. They can go all the way out to the sides, full splits, um, a knee, and I like that this knee uh, pad, I guess, can also bend, so you can have it up like that, or you can leave it out like that, it's your choice. Uh, we have a thigh swivel, and we have feet that can hinge forward and back, not side to side. It's, and he has nice big feet for standing on actually, he's pretty solid. The articulation is quite good um, for what it is. The fact that he can stand so well really helps. I'm going to give it an overall score of, again, about a seven and a half. It'd be nice if he had a waist. Uh, it'd be nice if he at least had ankle tilts, and ankle tilts definitely could have been done. The way the hinge is done, I think they could have easily put like uh, a bar in there of some sort that went straight across with maybe a ball joint or something on it. I think it would have been easy enough to do. But a uh, seven and a half, uh, you know what, I'm in a good mood. Let's say an eight. So overall this guy's getting about a 7.75, which in terms of the last night line is pretty grand. That's pretty high praise from me for this line. Uh, the guy here in Canada is still overpriced. I would still wait for a sale. But in terms of quality, he's not bad so far. Now we have to do the transformation. And that is challenging, we will say. Um, <clears throat> not difficult, per se but challenging in that there's a lot of steps. I'm not going to do size comparisons now. Since we're going to be taking him back to robot mode, I'll show him off then uh, next to a couple of other Voyagers. But he's, he's a decent sized Voyager. You know, I mean, it is what it is. Um, so where do we begin with this guy? I always like to start the easy stuff if we can. And we're going to do that now. So we come here to this arm first. And these you push in, but they'll only push in so far, and it feels like they should be able to go in more. And indeed, they do. You kind of need to push them 
up toward the top of the nose cone. Is it the top of the nose cone? Yeah, it is. You need to push it up kind of toward the top a little bit and then you can push it in. It's only like a millimeter or two, but it's enough that it lets you push them all the way in flush. Then you take these pieces and fold it all the way down and under and this piece all the way down and under. And when you do that, you can come down here and you can peg these together. And you have the, you know, nose cone and cockpit section of the plane finished. Technically what's going to happen is this arm is going to kind of come down between where his legs are because that's where the front of the plane is going to be. You'll see how it comes together as we keep going. Over here on the other arm, you <clears throat> straighten it out, push in the cannon, fold up the fist. And that's kind of the arms done. We pull this piece out and we pull this piece out. Okay, now comes perhaps the trickiest part of this guy, where you need to basically take the whole assembly that his head is on and pull it forward. It, there's a very good chance that the head is actually going to pop off during this. What you really need to do, <clears throat> see if I can show this, is you're looking to reach down behind the head and pull that whole black section up. So you come down behind the head and you pull that whole section up. And it looks like that. To my shock, I did not have the uh, whole head come off. Not to say that it won't happen yet. Um, but basically, have it all up like that for now. Okay. Whew. I'm already, I'm already kind of beat out with this guy. Um, and you see now you have a lot of open space in here. That's where this arm is going to be able to end up coming in. Uh, I think it's that arm. I think it's that one. Um, next. Where do I want to go next? Where do I want to go next? Let's probably unfurl his wings next. Okay. So, a lot of people have said that the sections up top here pop off when they unfurl the wings. And I can understand that. It's very delicate to do it and not have it pop off. I find it helps if you pull out the first part of the wing over here. And then, if you can do it, and I have done it, I won't say regularly, but I have done it. Pick that up, there, open it out, and open it out, and I push this down. How did I do that without uh, popping that piece off? You have two little hinges here that this piece is attached to. The only other place that this engine section is attached to is directly across from it. So you only need to take it off of the one tab that it's connected to in here. People try to take it off of other tabs. You don't need to. It's not connected anywhere else. So come over to, to this wing and bring it out. You're looking to bend it back on these hinges just ever so slightly and you pull it out, and you pull it out, and you push it down. And you bring those in like that. Um, okay, so far, so far, so good. Uh, <clears throat> this arm over here that has the cannon on it needs to come right up, is it right up behind? Yeah, right up behind. So we're going to pull out the shoulder panel, and then this entire black section will fold up in behind. Right up in behind like that. We turn it so that this is up and we bring it in as close as we can. You kind of have the bicep going in at a 45 degree angle and then you have the arm come out straight. It, it is a bit weird. You can turn the head around if you're so inclined. To not have that just hanging out, hanging out on the bottom. But that's basically what you're looking to have done. 
I could have something done wrong, but this is the way I've gotten it to work. Let's put it that way. Pushing that all the way in as much as you can. Mm, let me just clean this up for a second. Oh. Okay, so this is what we have. This whole tail fin piece comes back. There is a uh, slot up here that goes over a tab right here. We're going to flip it back. We're not going to worry about tabbing it on right now. But you can see how this is going to kind of come together so far. Okay, so we'll do the legs next. First, you need to split them. Then this one over here is the easier one to deal with. Basically, you turn the shin to the outside, you fold up the foot, and then you flip the whole thing down along the side of the body. For now, just leave it there. Don't worry about pegging it in or anything. Then we come to this side, and this is where things get real interesting with this guy. This leg is actually on another hinge, and you need to fold that leg out on the other hinge. Why? So that you can take this arm and bring it all the way down and around. So you bring that all the way down and around and in. Now you have two little starts here on the gray. They need to go into the sides of the cockpit. So you get those there. Put those in on the sides of the cockpit. Then you can fold this leg, um, and this is the hardest part, you can fold this leg back down. I keep, with this leg, I keep wanting to go back and forth with it, but that's not what you have to do right now. You have to fold it down on this hinge right here that's going at a bit of an angle. It's black, so it's challenging to see. Straighten it up. You see how over here, how this piece of, I guess, Pelvis section is straight. You need to keep this piece straight as well. Turn the leg out and flip up the foot. And I'll show you this now before I do anything else with it. Turn the leg out, flip up the foot. Then at the, I guess, thigh up here, you take the whole thing and you flip it up on the side of the body. All in all, this is your plane mode. The trick now is tabbing everything together. That's not the easiest because what you're looking to do is have the feet tab into the sides of that arm that we had underneath. This piece tabs down on that same arm. <coughs> These leg pieces go in, um, where is it that they go in? They go in under this kind of chest piece and that locks it in and then the wings need to lock down. Assuming you can tab all of that in, you're golden. So we begin by trying to bring in, and this is why you need to keep these leg pieces straight. That's a bit of a challenge. There. So this whole leg was kept straight and went in behind this chest piece and locked in. This one over here does not like to go in behind the chest piece as easily like ever. Let me get that piece in and then we'll you know, we'll, we'll finish this off. Okay, so <clears throat> I have these in under the chest sections, but I also wanted to point out here, there's a little section back here that's part of his back. If you have the wing out of the way, maybe I can take these up and get a bit out of the way even a bit more. Maybe I can't. Maybe I can't get that out of the way a bit more. You have the, a little gray section in here. That goes over a little lip there on the foot. You have the same thing on this side. There's a little gray section here that goes over a little lip sec section on the foot. It's basically part of his back, but you don't regularly see it. If you can get both legs in there, they will kind of automatically tab into the post here on the back. A lot of people have been saying, Oh, you need to tab them in back here first, and if you're lucky, they'll line up. No, if you tab them in so that <clears throat> they're between that chest section and this little piece on the back, and it is a bit of a struggle to get it in there, but if you can get it in there, then back here pretty much tabs itself together, no problem. That being said, we come here and straighten all this out and bring it down over, it tabs on. 
no problem. We bring down the wings, straighten them out. Silly me. Silly, silly me. I forgot a step. Flip this piece out. Now you can bring the wing down and tab it on. Same on this side. You come over here, you flip this little piece up, you straighten it out, and you bring it all the way down. Come under here, and there is a landing gear right there. Make sure you have that down, push this down, and boom, in the end, here you have Nitro Zeus or Decepticon Nitro, whatever you want to call them, in his plane mode. It is a cool looking plane mode. I dig it. I absolutely, positively dig it. I think it's, I think it's a huge success. Okay, so the guy was getting a 7.75. What about his transformation? It is involved. If you like a mainline figure that has a kind of a complicated transformation, this guy's for you, and he's going to score pretty high. I don't think I would give this one to a kid. There's a lot of tabbing things in, and there's a lot of interesting movements that are not intuitive. That's the thing about this guy. He's not intuitive. It's not that the transformation is bad. It's just he's not intuitive. I'm going to score his transformation for, uh, you know, somebody who likes complicated transformations, a nine. For a kid, probably a five and a half. So I'm going to go in between, I'm going to say it's about a seven and a half. Overall, for being Nitro, this guy's about a 7.6 if you want to get really technical about it. 7.625 if you want to get really technical about it. But, you know, he's about a seven and a half to his seven and three quarters. He's pretty good. He's one of the better of the line. He's a new mold, so I give him credit for all of that. The only reason I'm still being hard on him is because I still think that the dude is overpriced for a Voyager. If you can score him for, well, I think what we all know and love is a regular Voyager price, yeah, he's worth it. He's actually worth it. I can't believe I'm saying that about a tight, uh, or a uh, last night figure, but I guess they saved the best for last. Now, we have him in this mode. I've scored him in this mode. Let's start from here and work our way back. So as promised, we're going to start working our way back now. Um, so we already have our score for Nitro Zeus. This technically is a completely um, different review because now we're looking at a, a custom Titans Return Thunderwing. The head is the little die-cast head, of course, that came with the... Um, Siege on Cybertron set, and I looked at that a little while ago, uh, right here on the channel. Um, in this mode, you don't see a whole lot different. There's blue on the wingtips, and there's blue on the tail fin, and you see purple down and underneath, but that's about all that you see different in this mode. I could have done more, added more blue, for example, to the wings. I could have varied it more, but I kind of wanted to keep as much as possible this mode intact because I really do like it. So I'm not going to score the paint apps first. I'll wait until we're in robot mode. The articulation, that's going to be, you know, exactly the same as it was for uh, Nitro. Um, so, let's get into the transformation going back. This tends to be easier than the transformation into this mode. Like, there's always one that's easier, right? Going back to robot mode, at least for me, I find it to be something that's more simple. So where do we begin? Well, we need to loosen things up, and it's easiest if we loosen up those wings first and the whole tail fin section and put that one down and you can even flip this around. Now I had mentioned about kind of sandwiching the leg in between the back piece and the chest piece. That's what I got done and he's extremely solid now. Well, We're also going to fold up that front landing gear. Um, I'm going to unpeg from the back 
and now you need to basically pull the legs out from that section. I do find the leg on this side is tighter than the leg on this side for fitting in that little body cavity, we'll say. Um, where will we go next? Uh, I guess we'll also kind of split the nose cone there a little bit. Now, coming underneath here, rotate this leg out and rotate this arm up. It's probably the best thing to do. And rotate this arm back out. So we're getting the legs kind of exploded all the way down there. We're rotating this, this arm all the way out and we're rotating this arm, the nose cone one, all the way up and this whole hinge is going to go up into this, this section here. And I just lost the, the Titan Master head. I'm going to say this, the Titan Master head fits a little bit precariously um, in this mode. So you, you, honestly Nitro's head fits precariously. And that's the one that came stock on this as far as I'm concerned. It pops out pretty easily. I know it's a Titan Master port, but it's not the best Titan Master port. We'll worry about that in a little bit anyway. Um, so we bring these up and this whole black section that we flipped out, we flip Actually, before we bring that up, let's flip that whole black section back and bring in the shoulder. And of course, that flip back up. Just be a pain. There. I didn't have this shoulder all the way out, which meant this neck piece could not quite flip down. Okay, flip the whole neck piece down and kind of push the shoulders into place. Open out the little shoulder pieces up here orient this arm over here, flip out the fist and extend his arm cannon piece. Um, come down bottom and <clears throat> straighten up the legs. If you're wondering how to position the legs Actually, I guess I should do it this way. This leg was flipped out, so I actually flipped this leg in, then positioned the legs down. Uh, if you're wondering how to, how to position the hips, uh, there's a little pin on the front, or a little pin head on the front. There's a larger pin head on the back. The little pin head should be the piece that's out front when you're rotating this. Uh, you have to Sandwich the hip pieces together down here in the pelvis. Straighten down the leg and straighten down the leg. Turn at the thigh and turn at the thigh. And you'll notice I'm kind of running through this quickly because we've already seen it. Straighten up the feet. Mm, so far, so good. Um, this arm over here is fine. This one over here, we now need to deal with. Uh, you want to, if I can do it, you want to split this nose cone, which is a bit challenging when you're going back in this route, going back in this mode, but we will endeavor to get it. There you go. Fold all the way up and fold all the way up. And then extend his I don't know, bow, bow piece? I guess it's part of a bow. I assume it's part of a bow. And put that down and that down. Now we need to deal with these wing pieces. I showed you how to unfurl them. I'm gonna show you how to furl them back up. First, flip up that little piece down there and do, of course, the same on the other side. Detach the engine piece and bring it up straight and do it on the other side. As you fold it now, um, you're going to end up having this little section here go into is it this, yeah, go over this little nub in right here. Oop, I'm not showing that very well. You have a little section right here that's going to go over this little nub right here. So you fold it at the first hinge, 
you fold it at the next, lining it up. And it's a little challenging to see when I'm doing it here like this. You know what, let me get that in. Okay, I've got it in over, and then you fold that piece in. Now, on the other side we do the same thing. I'm gonna try and show it over here because I didn't have the best of luck over there. We bring this all the way back. We fold it in on the first hinge. That little slot goes over the little nub that's here. It is a bit of a delicate movement. And doing it from a distance is a little bit of a challenge. There you go, I got it. And then you fold in this last piece. There, so I've done it both ways without popping the um, without popping the section off. Uh, I did have, unfortunately, a little bit of a paint scrape on the arm. The Titan Master needs to go in, so I'm gonna do that and then we'll finish this guy off. So transformation and articulation are exactly the same as they were all along. We've already gone through that. Those scores are not gonna change because in essence, the figure hasn't changed. Putting the Titan Master, I've mentioned it a couple times now that it's not easy. It's one of those that if you're going to use Thunderwing, I find that your, your best chance for success, it'll really go in anyway, but you have to push hard from a couple of locations. But I find the best chance for success is if the head of the actual Titan Master itself is sideways and you insert it that way. It's probably going to be different for different people. I think it's a tolerance issue. Um, I think that it has to do with the paint that's on the head of the Titan Master. I don't mean on the face of Thunderwing. I mean actually the blue paint on the head of the Titan Master. You're probably going to get a bit of scraping over time. That is what it is. All in all, I, uh, I dig the kind of breakup of colors here. Uh, now I've seen a lot of people do a lot of work and a lot of variations on their own custom with this guy. This is mine. I wanted to incorporate the bit of blue on his wings. I managed to do with that a little bit. The purple on his feet, not by his chest. Uh, <coughs> the green and the... Uh, I, I guess it's supposed to be yellow, but since his face is gold, I wanted to keep the gold going throughout on his shins and on his uh, abdomen area. Uh, I, the green on his arms, I think you could have left that black. You could probably do it like a dark blue because I've seen different shades for it, I used an olive green, personally. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it like that. But for now, considering that this guy really only appeared in the comics, I think it's a pretty decent representation. A couple of people have seen it and said that, you know, it kind of ticks all the boxes and, uh, it, you know, turned out really well. So I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad of that. Why didn't I just leave this as Nitro? I mean, Nitro was in the movie. Uh, his head can transform, uh, you know, he was alright, he wasn't really around long enough to be an interesting character. Um, but there's more of a characterization to Thunderwing. Um, so I can appreciate that even though he didn't actually appear on the show. It works for me, it gave him a body, it made him a Voyager class and I think it matches him well. I'm going to score these paint apps at about, at about a nine. I mean, it's still not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. Um, if the Nitro was a seven and a half overall, or what was it, 7.625 or whatever it was, then I would say that this guy, because he's a bit more visually interesting, probably tops out at a 7.75 or an 8. Because in essence, the only thing that's different is the paint and the head. Anyway, let me know what you think of this guy. Let me know what you think of Nitro. Um, I would call this a win as far as the last night line goes. But don't overpay for the dude, whether you're going to keep him as Nitro or do a custom like I did. As always, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for giving me some of your very valuable time. 
and you know that I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together for another visit right here inside the videos.